The movie begins by providing historical context, explaining that in the late 1800s, there was a conference held to divide up the African Congo Basin. During this event, King Leopold II of Belgium seized control of the region's valuable minerals, leading to large profits for his nation. However, after five years, the resources began to run dry, accruing massive debts for the state. To address this issue, Leopold sent Captain Leon Rom to secure precious diamonds of Opar. We then see Leon leading a group of armed men into the Congo region. After a long walk, they come across a large rock formation that resembles a human face. Just then, they hear some sound coming from the fog, prompting them to take their position. When a spear is turned towards them, Leon's men open fire, killing dozens of African tribesmen. As they walk forward into the fog, they discover a large number of tribesmen surrounding them from above the rocks. Following this, all the men are killed by the warriors, leaving only Leon. At last, the tribe leader, Chief Mabonga, shows up and proposes a deal to Leon. Diamonds, in exchange for a particular person, George of the Jungle. There. Uh, Tarzan. The scene then cuts to England, where the Prime Minister speaks to a guy named John Clayton III, Earl of Greystroke. He is invited by King Leopold to head an expedition to Boma, Congo, as he's considered to be a real Tarzan. However, John politely declines the invitation and walks away. An American envoy named George Washington Williams follows him at sight and tries to persuade him to consider otherwise. He explains that Leopold is defaulting on his loans, and a visit from Greystoke would secure Britain's influence in the Congo. Furthermore, George reveals his suspicions that Leopold is enslaving people, and finally persuades John to go to the Congo in order to discover the truth. Following this, we see a flashback of decades earlier, when John's parents survived a shipwreck, but got stranded in the African jungle. John's father kept himself and his pregnant wife hidden in a tree house. Sadly, she died after giving birth to John. This origin story just doesn't slap as hard without Phil Collins. A few days later, John's father was also attacked and killed by a band of gorillas. The little John was then adopted by the Mangani, a race of apes. When he grew up, John left Africa for Greystoke Estate in Britain with his American wife Jane, and now he has embraced a new life as a wealthy nobleman. Back in the present, John goes to his wife, who is in the midst of conducting a class with a group of children. Later, he privately informs her about the expedition trip, which fills her with excitement. John initially tries to forbid her from accompanying him, as it is not safe. However, he eventually relents. When she insists, she's seen as ads. She knows he's a monkey man. The very next day, John, Jane, and George set off on their journey to the Congo. Along the way, they come across a group of Wyans, and John interacts with them affectionately. Jane then tells George that John has known these lions since they were cops. After a while, they arrive at Boma, where they are warmly welcomed by the Kuba village, the same place where John and Jane spent their youth. It turns out that Jane's father used to teach English here. The villagers appear to be delighted by their arrival. Jane also reunites with her childhood friend, Wasimbu. Later that night, they gather around a bonfire, and Jane shares John's past with George. She recounts how John adapted to life in the forest and became strong. According to Jane, John's ape mother, Kala, loved him as her own, whereas his ape brother, Akut, treated him with kindness and respect. She also reveals how odd their first encounter in the forest was. Legend has it, he threw poo at her. Elsewhere, Leon and his men find out John's whereabouts and take a steamship towards their location. They attack the Kuba village in the middle of the night, hold the chief at gunpoint, and instruct him to kneel. However, the latter refuses, claiming that the chief never kneels down. As a result, Leon mercilessly shoots him to death. John fights some of Leon's men, but he is ultimately captured by the overwhelming number of guards. After being tied up, he is taken to their steamship, along with some more villagers, including Jane and Wasimbo. Before reaching the ship, George intervenes by opening fire towards the enemies. He somehow manages to rescue John, but Leon and his men sail away with Jane 
Jane and of the captive villagers. In the morning, John is ashamed of the destruction caused by those who were actually targeting him. Believing that the bad guys are en route to Boma's mountain, John, along with several villagers, devises a shortcut route that will get them there before Leon's ship. Our hero then decides to become his Tarzan persona once more. Here comes the loincloth. After this, the group wastes no time and makes their way towards the forest. During this, George struggles to keep pace with the new gang. Upon arriving at a cliff, George asks John about how he's planning to catch the moving train, to which John replies, gravity, impressive one-liner for a monkey. Then, he and his comrades jump off the cliff. George hesitates, but he has no other choice but to follow suit. Meanwhile, on the steamship, Jane tells Leon that they are in the Congo by royal invitation. Much to her surprise, Leon reveals that he was the one who orchestrated the invitation so that he can capture Tarzan and deliver him to Mabonga. Later on, Jane is released from her restraints and is taken to Leon's quarters for dinner. On the way, she passes by Wasimbo, who is caged above the water. A guard threatens to drown him if she tries anything stupid. Bed. During this meal, Leon shares his wish to become a governor general by saving his king from bankruptcy. Back in the forest, John carries George on his back, and the team swings from Bayans at high speed. They land onto the moving train, which is transporting Belgian soldiers and enslaved Congolese. This only fuels John with rage, and as a result, he takes down the soldiers. Just then, the soldier's leader walks in, but John kicks him off the train in seconds. A short while later, an engineer is brought to them, who swears that he is only building a bridge for Leon's army. Confused, John asks for more details. In response, the engineer tells him about Leon's plan to take over the Congo, sanctioned by Leopold. According to him, Leon is building forts across the region, linked by railways and river travel. They are expecting an army of 20,000 mercenaries, who will all be arriving soon. With Leopold bankrupt, Leon needs the Diamonds of Opar to pay for the army. The next day, John and George plan their next moves. Upon gathering the necessary proof to expose Leopold, John and George leave the proof with the Kuba warriors, asking him to deliver it to Boma. The two of them then set off on foot, continuing their journey through Mangani territory. On their way, George wonders if John can actually talk to the animals. Shortly after, he gets a chance to see it happen. A bunch of ostriches pass by them, and one of them is apparently telling George to stay clear. Skarsgård's just staring at the green screen, saying, I'm talking to what? After some time they arrive at Mangani region, where they are confronted by a group of gorillas. John then explains how things will work. He says that Akut, who was once his brother, now considers him as a deserter. He asks George not to intervene under any circumstances. Following this, a fierce battle ensues between John and Akut, with Akut swiftly overpowering him within minutes. When he approaches George, John instructs him to kneel down. As George complies, Akut and the other gorillas depart, letting them live. But now, John sustains a painful bite on his back, so George has to use ants for stitching up the wound. The duo then decides to rest in the same area for a while. While sitting by the fire, George confides in John about his past, disclosing that he was once a mercenary himself. He admits to having engaged in a lot of stuff that he's not proud of, and deep down, he fears he might be no different than those Belgians. They make good chocolate though, so it's okay. The following morning on the steamship, Jane shouts something to Wasimbu in his native language. This infuriates the guards, prompting them to drop the cage into the water. Fortunately, Jane jumps into the water as well and breaks Wasimbu out. They swim to the shore and escape into the jungle. Jane instructs Wasimbu to rally the other tribesmen as she knows that Leon's men will pursue her. A short time later, she enters the Mangani region where she encounters a group of gorillas. She promptly kneels and bows in submission. Soon after, Leon arrives with his men. Leon cautiously approaches Jane and asks her to come with her. She agrees, on the condition that they won't hurt the apes. But, as they slowly walk backwards, Leon's men open fire, killing several gorillas. John can hear the gunshots and Jane screaming from afar. As a result, he immediately swings all the way there, arriving just in time to save his ape brother from a Belgian bullet. Amid the battle, Leon and his inner circle manage to flee, still taking Jane as their hostage. They make their way to Mabonga's tribe. On the other hand, George is wandering around the forest, trying to find John. The scene then shifts to a flashback that explains why Mabonga is so determined to capture Tarzan. Years ago, Mabonga 
Bonga's son unknowingly killed John's foster mother, Carla, while hunting in the Mangani territory. In retaliation, John brutally killed Mabonga's son as John held the dying Carla in his arms. Mabonga's people brought his son's body back. In the present, John follows Leon and his men into Mabonga's territory where he is greeted by the entire tribe. He tries to sort things out with Mabonga, but the latter isn't ready to hear anything. A one-on-one -on -one confrontation that ensues between John and Mabonga. Soon after, John gains the upper hand, holding Mabonga at knife point, prompting the entire tribe to encircle him. However, John is not alone, as a coot shows up with several gorillas behind him. Moments later, George also arrives and enlightens Mabonga about Leon's sinister plan. He asserts that Leon is their actual enemy, and not John, as Leon intends to wipe out Mabonga's entire tribe in order to capture the land. This revelation convinces Mabonga. He then takes a step back. On the other hand, Leon transports Jane and the Diamonds to Boma, where the mercenary army approaches the shoreline. John and George also reach the scene and realize that they cannot defeat the overwhelming number of mercenaries head on. As a result, John comes up with an idea. He sends a stampede of wildebeest through the town, overrunning Leon's men and demolishing the valley completely. Amidst this commotion, Kuba warriors also arrive by train and free their captive villagers. Sensing the imminent danger, Leon orders the diamonds be shipped into the steamship. He also tries to drag Jane along with him, but it's already too late, so he ends up leaving her. Meanwhile, John runs with the stampede, jumps atop a buffalo, and swings through the harbor, attacking some armed men. Skarsgård's still in front of the green screen saying I'm doing what? He soon rescues Jane before pursuing Liad. Liad is already on his steamship, preparing to deliver the diamonds to his corrupt financier, Mr. Froome, along with the mercenaries. In the meantime, George comes across a vintage machine gun, which he uses to destroy the steamship, causing it to start sinking. Just then, John climbs up the sinking vessel to confront Liad. In their intense struggle, Leon chokes John with his rosary beads, sure that's what they are, and ties him to the ship. Despite this, John fights back by trapping Leon between his legs and applying pressure until the beads snap from his neck. He then uses the sound of a mating call to summon crocodiles and leads Leon to their mercy. John escapes the ship just before it explodes. He then returns back to his wife and kisses her as the villagers all cheer. Damn, they're so high. Oh my god, it was so hot. hot. In the aftermath of these events, George returns to London and presents an open letter to the Prime Minister, exposing the enslavement and mistreatment of the Congolese people. One year later, John and Jane have relocated to Africa, where they welcome their first child. The movie ends with Tarzan swinging through the trees with his ape family. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.